Kia ora. Um, it's about breastfeeding and tongue ties. So support is very important for um, a woman's breastfeeding journey. And that's what we'd like you to remember today. So for counties Manukau, these are some of the support that we have for breastfeeding. And just go briefly through them. So Charita Water is free for up to two years and have Kaitapa Water workers who are women who have breastfed and have had extra breastfeeding education and not from a medical background. And then they have a lactation consultant who works there as well. They can do face-to-face -face contact in the home, text, Zoom, video, and um, they do an antenatal class as well that includes breastfeeding for especially um, the focused on Indian women. And they have an 0800 number there. B for Baby is another service that's based out of Tūriki Healthcare. And it's a kaupapa Māori breastfeeding education and support, very similar to Tūrita Ora, but goes up to six months. Um, and the Kaiafina instead of a kaitipa water worker, and they also have a lactation consultant who will um, back up for complex issues. And again, face-to-face -face video calls. They can arrange, if they like, to go to the Convene, Covene Clinic at Tūriki Healthcare in Mangere, um, but that's by appointment because they're not based at Mangere Clinic anymore. And La Leche League have been around a long time, mother to mother support for education, and that's now mostly done uh, social media, phone, and email. And for Auckland South, in anyway, we have Howick, Papakura have meetings. Pukekohe is um, mostly on the phone now, and they have online Facebook meetings. And this is our upcoming update of our breastfeeding support in South Auckland, the leaflet that the women should all get in their discharge pack uh, when they're going home, and it has all the contact details for all of those information. Um, as, as I said before, when I was doing the presentation on the, on the primary birthing units that we had gone out to the consumers to, to um, find out what they've found good about being in a primary birthing unit. And of course the primary birthing units spend a lot of time walking, working with women and supporting their breastfeeding. And so these in the slide shows some of the comments that came back from that. So the breastfeeding support that's available that's run out of the primary birthing units are lactation consultant clinics. They're held at Botany on a Wednesday, a full day clinic, and also half a day on a Friday. And we're just opening a lactation clinic for um, for the Papakura area, so women can um, be seen in Papakura. It's also going to be on a Wednesday, and they also run some clinics out of um, Pokikoi as well. The clinics are there to support antenatal, to provide antenatal education, and, and we can do some early referral to that. Um, they can provide support from birth until six weeks postpartum. Um, but breastfeeding assessments are done and support provided for those women and families. And of course we do the tongue tie assessments and of course we do releases at Botany and at, at Pukekohe. So how do women get to lactation clinics? Well they can self-refer, they can be referred by their midwife or they can be referred by their GP. The clinics are there to educate, assess and create um, breastfeeding plans, mentor them, coach the woman if we need to, and, and we like to involve the family if we can if there's continuing breastfeeding issues. Uh, we provide support with latching, positioning issues, diagnosing lingual and labial fremulin, slow weight gain in babies, mastitis concerns and treatment, undersupply or oversupply management, nipple trauma management, and treatment supporting women with Raynaud's phenomenon and supporting women with breast enlargements or reductions. Women can be seen antenatally from 32 weeks. These are women usually that have got health complexities and they may have some issues around lactation. Um, and we like to therefore talk to them about what can, we can do to support them in their breastfeeding journey so that it's not so traumatic for them and they've got some strategies when they're having some issues um, postnatally. 
Um, they, that's also a good place to actually unload some issues. If they've had a particularly bad breastfeeding experience the first time, they sometimes really need to unload. And so it provides that, that sort of environment for them to do that. Um, we also provide advice and support with antenatal milk expressing and storage of the breast milk, benefits of the skin to skin and advantages of breastfeeding and, and general information about breastfeeding because actually a lot of people don't know very much about breastfeeding and it gets, it's um, a really good way of supporting them and unfortunately our antenatal education is very limited now. Many women do not access it. Um, time spent developing strategies to help them to, to support their breastfeeding. As a result of the clinics, it really became apparent that there was a group of babies that were unable to latch because of anglia glossia or tongue tie. And so this is, um, I'll put a definition here for you. So a condition where the tongue cannot move freely because the frenulum is too tight or too short. Anglia glossia occurs in about 4 to 10% of babies, and I will say probably more in male babies than females. Not all tongue ties require treatment and not all tongue ties cause problems, but they can affect breastfeeding. A scoring system is used to work out if the feeding problems are due to restricted tongue function, and it can either be the Hatliff, which we tend to use at counties, or the Bristol Tongue Tie Assessment Tool, which is used at Waitamata and elsewhere in New Zealand. Let's just show you some slides of a tongue tie. Uh, these babies here would probably all struggle with breastfeeding. So the potential impact on the baby with a tongue tie is that it, it cannot latch particularly deeply and it's, so it, therefore it slips on and off. The baby feeds really frequently and for very long periods of time but it, at the same time its weight gain is really quite slow and it becomes a very fractious baby. And the impacts on the mother is that she has nipple pain, nipple trauma. She's absolutely sleep deprived because she's got this very unsettled baby. Um, there is de delay or reduced lactation and she can, can lead on to um, a blocked ducts and mastitis and the mastitis can also come from the nipple trauma as well. And of course she then develops a, a, a sense of depression and, and sense of failure. So the Hazelbaker tool um, is just, we're looking at, um, it's, it's got seven functions and five appearance scores and, the, and they're all scored naught to two, so a perfect score would be 14 over 10. And I'll just put a little thing up there so you can see that there's the function scores there, so you can see what we're looking at for the function, and you score that. And then the appearance scores, and you can see all the things we're looking at there, and again you score it. And then you see at the bottom it's got a function score and an appearance score, so a perfect score would be 14 over 10. So if you've got a function score, say at, three, at 11 over about 7 or 8, you would, uh, and under that you would be looking at needing, perhaps considering that you may need to do a phrenotomy. And certainly the lower the function score and the lower the appearance score, the more likely you are needing to do a phrenotomy. Um, the Bristol score is done differently in that it's got four elements and again they're scored naught to two. Um, and I can just show you what, what we're sort of looking at here so you can see what they show that will show it graphically what they're looking for the tongues. So a score below five would more likely require a phrenotomy and scores above that from six to eight would be you would consider doing some breast management and then seeing what you need to do and at eight you shouldn't need to do anything because it's a perfect score. Um, the phrenotomy may be offered um, as a minor procedure to cut the, of the frenulum. There's no anaesthetic required for a baby up to six weeks. Um, it can be done by a midwife or a doctor. I, I personally do them at, at, um, at botany. Um, we do assess for, for the labial fre, um, frenulum because they do, there's been a lot of talk about lip ties. Um, this research is certainly not supporting that we need to do anything with those. They don't have any impact on breastfeeding. Um, and we follow those women up in, in a week. So this um, slide shows how the nipple can be quite pinched at the tip there when the baby does have a tongue tie. And you can see when they've had the release done, they can get a deeper attachment better milk transfer and less maternal pain and you can see there the change in the shape of the nipple much more rounded as its back not being squashed. So ORL referrals can be made for um, the deeper tongue ties that Helen Mary can't do and um, but GPs are unable to refer directly to ORL 
they need to have a lactation consultant assessment and referral first. So that can be done through Tarita Ora or the breastfeeding clinics, and then we can refer to ORL, which is free, and there's a national guideline that expects each um, area to have a free pathway for those babies. Thank you. Thank you.